AI today is almost unrecognizable from what it was two years ago, and the pace of progress is accelerating. There are more AI models than ever before, and every day, more AI apps are moving from prototype to production. It's such an exciting time to build. Uh, developers like all of you are not just pushing the envelope of what these models can do, you're expanding it at an exciting rate. At OpenAI, we're a research company, and our mission is to build artificial general intelligence that benefit all of humanity. For that, we believe in iterative deployment, putting this technology in the hands of people uh, as early and frequently as possible, and improving it along the way. And we know that this mission is a shared journey. We strongly believe that developers, researchers, engineers, startup founders, and all of you in this room are key to achieving the G in AGI. You are the inventors of the native AI products of tomorrow, and you see the future before everyone else. You'll bring it to life. Just four years ago, we trained GPT-3. We knew we had something quite special in our hands, but frankly, we had no idea what was actually possible, what kind of real-world use cases this technology could power. So the very first product we launched was actually the OpenAI API. It was designed to let you all, builders, explore what GPT-3 could do. It, it empowered you all to tinker, to experiment, and discover new apps that we could not, frankly, have imagined ourselves. And it turns out GPT-3 was pretty good at creating marketing content, doing basic code snippets, chatbots, even translating content in different languages. But to put things in perspective, one of the most popular use cases at the time was actually AI Dungeon, a role-playing game where the user could kind of look around and generate new sets of scenery. Uh, that was the state of the art back then. Um, well, uh, needless to say, looking back, the capabilities of GPT-3 were quite limited. It didn't even have tools, it made a lot of mistakes, and it was quite slow. Uh, but it was a stepping stone to where we are today. AI has evolved significantly since then. We've made so much progress as an industry. We've ventured into new frontiers with models that can now tackle complex things, complex problems. First, GPT-4 vastly expanded. The aperture of possibility here was much more creative. It was more specific. It was better at coding. It could use some tools. It could interpret data. It could like, explain images and so on. And earlier this year, we introduced GPT-40 and GPT-40 Mini that pushed that boundary even more on both intelligence and cost efficiency. But last month, we also unveiled O1, our first series of models capable of reasoning about complex problems. And we uh, previewed the two versions of it. One is designed uh, for complex challenges that require deeper thinking and broad knowledge. And the one mini, which is faster and excels at coding, math, and science. But you might wonder, what do we mean by reasoning? Because reasoning comes so naturally to us as humans, right? It's, it's quite hard to, to articulate. And it refers to the ability for the model to have a reliable chain of thought, like the ability to consider and evaluate multiple hypotheses, the ability to reflect before responding. And in recent years, there's been a ton of discussion about agents in our field, AI systems that can perform tasks autonomously. Well, we think the progress in reasoning was kind of one of the missing capabilities for the agents to really work. But the impact of reasoning isn't just for agentic apps. It has already direct implications for uh, the applications you all build every day to tackle hard challenges. But building on that, there's another paradigm shift that we're extremely excited about, and that's multimodality. Multimodality refers to the ability for the model to not just work with text, like we have uh, seen in the past, but also work with speech, audio, vision, and even video. And with the introduction of native multimodal capabilities, the idea of needing multiple models for text, audio, vision started to disappear. Now that convergence opens up new possibilities for you all to create apps that interact with users in much more natural and intuitive ways. If you've experienced advanced voice mode, for instance, in ChatGPT, you may have noticed how fluid that is. It's a much more human-like uh, interaction. And one of the top requests we've heard from developers is how can I build the exact same thing? How can I bring the same capability into my own product? Well, now you can. Just a couple of weeks ago at Dev Day in San Francisco, we announced the real-time API. It's a super low latency API that lets you build natural AI experiences right into your apps. 
And we really believe that this natural kind of speech to speech experience is opening up new kinds uh, of applications and interactions. Whether your users are learning, driving, cooking, or maybe simply trying to be more productive at work, this new mode of interaction has the potential to really delight and empower them. But you know, I could really keep talking about it for hours, but to really get a feel for it, you need to experience it live. And so we are very lucky to have Katya from our developer experience team with you all here in Parrot. So she's gonna walk you through how the real-time API works and show you some live depots in action. So from San Francisco to Paris, uh, over to you, Katya. Thanks, Raymond. Yes, let's talk about this new real-time API. So unlike our other REST APIs, this one is Wapsicle-based, and it opens a two-way stateful connection that allows to send and receive text and audio messages to and from the API. And it's really different from what we've had before. And it can also drastically improve not only the user, but also the developer experience for speech-to-speech -speech apps. But to really understand why it's so exciting, let me take you back in time to the beginning of the month. I know, things move fast in this field. So before we shipped real time on October 1st, if you wanted to build multimodal apps, whether it was with our APIs or on any other platform, you had to stitch different models together. And if you're doing that, then you have to perform multiple steps to go from input to final output. So let's talk about these steps. And just for convenience, I'm going to use OpenAI models as an example, but keep in mind that it would be pretty much the same flow regardless of the stack that you're using. So first, you have to capture the user's speech. And for that, you either need a button that they can press to let you know that they're talking, or you need to detect that they're done speaking yourselves. And after that, you get audio and you need to process that audio with a transcription service, like our transcription API that uses our whisper model. Then you get text out, and you can process that text with a language model, like GPT-4, for example, to generate a response. And then the last step is to generate voice. And for this, you need a third model, like our text-to-speech model, to have speech as the final output. So if you've been following, you probably noticed that each step in this flow depends on the output of the previous one, which makes the overall process slow, first of all. But also, it can't react fast enough to allow for natural interruptions. So this makes it really hard to build fluid, lifelike conversational experiences. But since GPT-40 can actually natively handle all these modalities, you don't need to use three different models anymore. You can actually just, it, you, you don't need to, to convert other modalities into text for the model to understand. It can process audio inputs and visual inputs as well, actually, directly. And it can also generate speech without having to generate the text first. And now, with the real-time API, you can actually leverage these capabilities for the first time. So we're starting with speech, text, and function calling, and we'll be working to add more in the future. And not only can you send and receive text and audio, but you can also, as you, can, as you probably have understood by now, it's also in real time. So that means that you can communicate directly with the model with ultra low latency. But what does that mean exactly, ultra low latency? Well, in that case, I think it's better to show than tell. So I'm just going to show you so you can see or hear for yourselves. So let me switch to my laptop here. And I have this app set up with the real time API. OK, let's try it. Hey, can you hear me? Loud and clear. How can I help you today? 
Okay, I'm on stage here at the Dot AI conference with a crowd of amazing builders in AI. Can you say hello to everyone? Hello, everyone at the Dot AI conference. So thrilled to be here with all you fantastic AI builders. Keep innovating. And it's actually in Paris, so could you say hello in French? Bien sûr, bonjour à tous à la conférence Dot AI à Paris. Ravi d'être ici avec vous, les fantastiques créateurs d'IA. So, isn't that amazing? Like, I can just talk to my computer now, and there's no perceivable latency. It's like I'm talking to a real person. But another cool thing with this API is that you can also use automatic server-side voice detection to handle interruptions easily. So let's try it. Hey, can you list all of the Paris arrondissements one by one with their names? Sorry, I can't do that. Yeah, you can. I know. You, you did it yesterday. Sorry, I can't do that. <laughs> can you Would just you... list one by one all of the Paris arrondissements? Sorry, I can't do that. Oh my Is god, it... live demos, I swear, it's a curse. <laughs> okay, can you just count to ten? Absolutely. One, two, three, four. Okay, so stop right there. Can you tell me, when did I stop you? You stopped me at four. Okay, great. And since I still want to talk about Paris, can you whisper in a very low voice like this, a secret that only true Parisians would know? Psst. Les vrais Parisiens savent que la meilleure baguette se trouve souvent dans une petite boulangerie de quartier, cachée des regards touristiques. <laughs> okay, thank you. I hope uh, it, it was something about baguettes for those who don't understand French. <laughs> Okay, so that it was sure really was cool. about baguettes. <laughs> a true Parisian treasure. So that was really cool. Like I could just jump in at any point and interrupt like I would interrupt a human. I mean, I hope you're not actually interrupting real people like this because it's a bit rude, but you know, it feels very natural. So Romain, how's that for a live demo? I mean, it, it, it's really awesome. I, I love how you were able to interrupt the model, uh, make it talk in French, uh, get, generate intonations like the whispering. It sounds like it needs to learn about arrondissements still. Uh, today it was like a bit too shy, I think, of, about in front of all of these Parisians in the room. Um, but I was, gonna, I was gonna add, like, what really sets the, the uh, real-time API apart compared to, say, ChatGPT advanced voice mode is really the ability for developers to program it, right? You can use it with your own tools, your own functions, any APIs, in fact. Um, and that can happen seamlessly while you're handling this WebSocket connection in real time. And so that really lets you build completely new experiences. So Katya, why don't you just show us something a bit more advanced where you could use, say, like function calls to create something more immersive where you could interact with voice, but also call out to other APIs and tools. Yeah, sure, let's do that. I have another example here. So let's see how we can use this 3D view of the solar system and just use voice to navigate through space. OK, I'm at the Dot .ai conference right now. Can you show me which planet we're on? Sure thing, we're on Earth. Let me zoom in on it for you. There we go. Earth is our home in the vast solar system. Great. Um, can you tell me, for example, um, what is the composition of the atmosphere on Earth? Absolutely. Earth's atmosphere is primarily made up of nitrogen, about 78%. Oxygen, with small amounts of argon, carbon dioxide, and other trace gases. It's the perfect mix for life as we know it. Can you show that to me in a chart? Here's a pie chart showing the composition of Earth's atmosphere. You can see how nitrogen and oxygen dominate the mix. OK, cool. I have a question about Mars now. All right, let's talk about Mars. What would you like to know? Mars is ready for your question. So I heard there was a lot of volcanoes there. Can you tell me which one's the biggest? Absolutely. The largest volcano on Mars is Olympus Mons. 
It's also the tallest planetary mountain in the solar system, standing at about 13.6 miles. Wow, that's actually a lot. Can you tell me how big that is compared to Mount Everest, for example? Olympus Mons is about 2.5 times the height of Mount Everest. Mount Everest stands at 8,848 meters, while Olympus Mons towers at 21,900 meters. It's a giant. Let's see that in a chart. Here's a bar chart comparing the heights of Olympus Mons and Mount Everest. Okay, cool, thank you. You're welcome. It was fun exploring the solar system with you. Okay, so let's talk about what happened here. So I talked about planets, and we just flew in to see those up close. And whenever I asked the questions that could be answered with data, we saw some charts pop up on the screen. So how is that possible? Well, as Romain said, the really cool thing about the real-time API is that you can do tool calls. So I actually went ahead and defined some tools here. So I have the focus planet tool that just takes the name of the planet as a parameter, and that will be triggered whenever we talk about a specific planet. And then there's also this display data tool here. And the idea is that when there's something that can be answered with data, the model will choose what is the most appropriate chart, what, are, what is the title, and what are the data points that it should display. So that's already cool. You can trigger interactions in your app with your voice, but sometimes you might also need to send data back to the model so that it can say it out loud. So let's see how we can do this. I have this API call defined here that just fetches uh, at the same point the current position of the International Space Station, and it will return the latitude and the longitude. And then there's also this tool call here, show ISS. And whenever this tool will be triggered, we'll call that fetch ISS position function and then send the results, the latitude and longitude, back to the model as a tool response. So let's try it in action. Hey, can you go back to Earth? Sure thing, we're back on Earth. What else can I help you with? Can you tell me where the ISS is? The International Space Station is currently orbiting above the coordinates of approximately 99.493 degrees longitude and negative 50.0483 degrees latitude. It's How, do you know that? How do you know that? I accessed real-time data to pinpoint the current location of the ISS for you. Pretty cool, right? Yes, it's it is. It is cool. <laughs> I don't know what you think, but... <laughs> okay, so... It's fascinating, isn't it? <laughs> the International Space Station orbits our planet at incredible speeds, allowing us to study space and Earth in real time. Anything else you are curious about? Okay, so if we look at what's happening here, it actually called this show ISS tool, and so we fetched the data with the function, sent that back to the model, and now you know how you can actually feed data in real time to the model so that it can use it in conversations with your users. OK, last question. Hey, uh, can you tell me, based on the current position of the planets in their orbits, how do you think the event's going to go? While I can't predict events, based on the current positions of the planets. It's always interesting to see how the planets align in their orbits around the sun. Is there anything else you'd like to know? Actually, just looking at this, I can tell you, I'm sure the event's going to go great. That's a positive outlook. May the planetary alignment bring good things your way. Enjoy the event. If you have any more questions, feel free to ask. OK, so great. With the real-time API, we've actually built a native speech-to-speech -speech immersive application that you can interact with through voice with low latency and that can react visually to what you're asking thanks to tool use. And yeah, so I hope this has sparked some ideas on what kind of new experiences is possible thanks to the real-time API. And now let's go back to the other side of the planet. Romain, back to you. 
Yeah, that was really, really awesome. Uh, and by the way, just a quick recap, maybe for, from what you just saw. First, Katya was having this like natural speech-to-speech -speech conversation with an AI model to fly through space. As she was asking questions, then the model knew it had access to some tools, like the ability to move to a different planet or display a chart when that was relevant. But not only that, uh, one of these tools fetched data in real time from the Open Notify API to track the ISS in real time at the exact coordinates. And all of that is, of course, just scratching the surface of what you all are going to be able to build uh, with the real time API. We are super excited about the potential of real time interactions. And we really see this as the beginning of a new generation of products that can, build, uh, that can be built to be natively uh, multimodal. And as Katia mentioned, audio is just the first step. You know, like GPT-40 class models can do much more than hear and speak. They can also see. So in the future, we want to leverage those capabilities as well uh, and to expose them uh, in our APIs for you all to build with. We think that builders who start building with this now, even in its infancy, will be one step ahead of the revolution that's coming in how we design computer interfaces in the future. I really wish I could be with you all today in Paris, uh, but I'm super excited for us to open an office in Paris very soon. Uh, the French tech ecosystem in AI has been incredible. The talent, the energy, it's just like mind blowing to see. Uh, and I'm personally looking forward to spending time with many of you next month and listening to your feedback as to what can we do better and how can we help. Uh, so with that, thank you so much. We really can't wait to see what you're gonna build with these new modalities and how you're gonna reimagine every piece of software we've used from the past decades into like future products with natural human to computer interactions. We really can't wait to see uh, what, what you're gonna come up with and you can get started today uh, with our real-time uh, API docs. Katia, any last tip for our audience here in Paris? Yeah, well, you are now part of a very small group of developers and builders who've actually experienced this live and who now know about the potential of this technology. So all I can say is use it to your advantage. Thank you. <laughs>